Good morning, it's Penuel the Black Pen. As a father of six really amazing children, four boys, two girls, one of the things that I'm conflicted on is how to raise my children. Um, for a lot of us, we are very intentional with our parenting. What that means is we have a view and a vision and a plan for what we want for our kids. And what I normally advise a lot of parents that come to me for advice is look at the potential end goal for what you want for your kids. Do you want your child to be a high earning professional? Do you want your child to be self-employed? Do you want your child to own a business? Do you want your child to be an investor? Do you want your child to be a professional athlete? Do you want your child to be an entertainer, etc., etc.? And then work backwards to today. And even when you work backwards to today, also over time, assess if your child is skilled in that space, if they are even interested in that space, but they have a plan. My child is five years old. I want my child to be Beyonce. My child is five years old. I want them to be Oleg Deripashka, who's a billionaire in Russia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them to these type of schools or these types of institutions, or maybe they will be home educated and they will have all of these people around them to help them, to help groom them into what they are eventually going to be. And over time you realize my child can't really sing. My child doesn't really like business. They're more into maths. My child can't sing. They're more into football. And you work on that and then you try and sculpt. But it's intentional. You are constantly plugged into your child's development and the end goal and you want him to thrive. We live in an age now where women have been empowered. Women have been empowered. Women are now getting into roles that traditionally they wouldn't get into. Being a doctor, being an engineer, getting into politics at the highest levels, uh, driving minibus taxis, driving buses, working in construction, etc. A lot of men feel like they've been left out. We've left the, the boy child back. A lot of men now are pushing for pro-masculinity. We need to get our men back. We need to get young boys to become men. Now, as a father, how I worry, or what I worry about when it comes to raising my kids is, how do I raise them? Do I raise them with traditional, old-school gender roles? Do I raise them on the modern parenting formula, which is what we have now? Or do I raise them into an idealistic, futuristic type of model? So the old school is gender roles. Boy, little girls, they go and when you buy them toys, you buy them little Barbie dolls so that they can learn how to nurture from a young age. They also dress up these little dolls so that they're into fashion and aesthetics. And then you buy them a little cooking set, you know, so that they're like, oh, I'm cooking, we're making tea. And from there, they spend time mostly with their mother or other women learning how to cook, learning how to bake, learning how to clean around the house, do laundry. If there are children around, they babysit. Old school, female gender role. The little boy, when you go and buy him toys, you buy him the toy gun, you buy him the action figurines, he wants to be a protector, you know, and over time, he spends time with mostly dad or other male figures, he gyms, he's going to be physically strong, he maybe works in the garden, maybe does gardening, he washes the car, maybe learns how to fix the car, traditional old school male gender roles. So that's what worked in the past. And what worked in the past is women could comfortably be women because men would always fill the gap. If it is not her boyfriend or her husband, it would be her father, it would be her brother, it would be the man next door who helps her with her car, it could be the guy down the road who's coming to check out what's, what's wrong with her plumbing or whatever. That's what happened in the past. Same with men. Men wouldn't need to learn how to cook and bake because there would always be a woman around. If it is not his mother, if it is not his wife, his girlfriend, it would be some woman out there somewhere that makes sure that he's eaten that his clothes have been washed, have been ironed, etc. Because of time and circumstance and largely engineering, which is capitalism, we've broken that home structure which worked back in the day. And also, I guess, because of exclusion. Because there would always be girls that want to do traditional male guys, uh, male things. There would always be boys who want to do the traditional girl things. But we had these traditional generals. And some cultures and some religious groups still hold on to them. Because of circumstance and capitalism, Women in particular found themselves not having the men that they need around. You need someone to protect you. There's no man around. Your dad's not there. Your husband's not there. There's no guy next door. So you are forced as a woman to learn self-defense. You are forced as a woman to go get a gun and get into a shooting range to learn how to defend yourself. You now realize as a woman, there's no man to provide. My husband has passed on or my boyfriend has left me and moved on. I now need to make money because I'm left with a child. What will my child eat? Yes, I can cook, I can clean, I can do laundry, I can iron. 
but who's going to bring the money to buy the groceries? So I need to learn. And women had to learn how to fill in that gap where men were lacking. For some men, of course, sometimes you're just single. You're like, bro, if I don't have a woman, I cannot buy takeaways forever. I'm going to have to learn to cook. Maybe if I like nice cakes, I'm going to have to learn how to bake. There's no woman around. My shirt is wrinkled. Let me go buy an iron. Let me buy an ironing board and learn how to fucking iron this thing. Let me buy a washing machine and learn how to wash my own clothes. So because of circumstance and the lack of the other gender, we found ourselves with modern parenting and a modern way of living today, where both men and women have to learn skills of old school other gender. Now, what is the idealistic future? What does it look like? Is it a matter of we're going back to the way? So I've got four boys and two girls. Do I say, okay, this is what we did back in the past. This is where we are now because of circumstance. But I want to build towards an idealistic future. Is the idealistic future saying all my girls are feminine? My daughters, they're going to cook and bake. Oh, daddy, I love pink. I like these soft things. I want to do my makeup, etc. And you're like, stay away from the masculine stuff. My daughter calls me, dad, my car's broken down. I'm on my way. Or I'm sending your brother. We will come and change your tire, etc. Boys, same. My boys are raised to do the heavy lifting. They do the farming. They do the washing of the cars. When they're hungry, their sisters are there to cook for them or their girlfriends or their mother, whatever the case. Is that the ideal future? Or do we want a future where, or do I want a future where both my boys and girls are learning both sides? Let's go wash the car. Who? Who must go wash the car? The girls and the boys. Let, mom is about to cook. Mom, take the boys and the girls, teach them how to cook, teach them how to bake. We're going to look at the doll section, both boys and girls. We're going to look at the action figure se uh, section, both boys and girls. My kids get to age 16, I take the boys and the girls to the shooting range. This gun is called a 9mm, this gun is called a whatever. And we're going and you must learn how to shoot. This is how you load bullets. We go to a car and you need to change the tire. If the boys are strong, they can change it. If they're not, we help. If the girls are strong, they can change it. If not, we help. These are the tools that you, every boy and girl then has a toolbox. Every boy and girl knows how to do basic plumbing, basic electrical work, basic mechanical work, basic woodwork. They can cook, they can clean, they can. I am conflicted. And this thing now transcends beyond for me just how I raise my boys and my girls. Speaks to me. I have been largely feminized because of circumstance. I grew up in an area where I was largely raised by a single mother. So the things I was mostly exposed to was cooking, cleaning. That's what I did. Luckily, my mom loved gardening. So there'd be some element of gardening. But I wasn't there learning how to service a car. I wasn't le there learning how to grow fruit trees and how to grow vegetables. I wasn't there learning how to build a bench and make furniture. My father was an, a building inspector, but I wasn't taught how to be a bricklayer, how to mix cement. Luckily, through life experience, I got, got to learn how to mix cement and those things. But I wasn't raised on those traditional male roles. I wasn't taught how to fight, literally taken to a boxing or a karate to say, you're a man, you must learn how to fight. I wasn't taken to the shooting range, even though my dad had guns and he loved guns. But I wasn't sent on a regular, go learn how to shoot. Luckily, my father took me to learn how to hunt with the nobkiri and dogs, greyhounds. So I could, so, but generally I was feminized. So do I now aggressively learn these masculine things and I enroll in plumbing courses, electrical work courses, mechanical courses? Do I go to the shooting range more often? Do I learn how to fight and say, I want to be more masculine? Do I do that or do I focus on what it is that I already have? And like any other woman, I outsource the more masculine stuff. When I'm in trouble, I call the police. There are people here, I'm not sure, because I don't have a gun and I can't go patrol. When my car's broken down, I'm like, yo, hey, let me call a mechanic. I don't know what's going on. Like any other woman, I call a mechanic because I'm a feminized man. Or do I learn these things? It's something that some of us need to think about, even from a societal perspective, where in the South African context, the Indian Muslims and the Jews are the best business people in this country. When you look at some of the best businesses run in this country, it's Indians and it's the Jewish population. When you look at farming in this country, the best farmers in South Africa are white Afrikaners. The best farmers. When you look at entertainment, singing, dance, acting, it is largely black people. So do we look at society and say, okay, this is where we are. 
Do we want more black kids learning agriculture? Do we want more black kids getting into business? It's what's happening now. Is that what we want ideally? Do we want more Indian kids learning how to sing and dance and act? Do we want more Indian kids getting into farming? Do we want some of the white Afrikaans men after they leave rugby practice to be there learning how to do Ivorsho and learning Ama Piano and learning how to act? Do we want to pass on some of these skills that seem to be traditionally for certain groups? Or do we say, Indians, focus on business and we will support you to become the best business people in the world? Afrikaners become the best farmers in the world, especially because they complain about farm murders and food security. We will support you as best as we can. And then we will tax you guys and take this money and funnel it into where black people are best. Football, entertainment. The Afrikaners focus on your rugby. The Indians maybe focus on your cricket. We will invest in what you're best at and then we will outsource. When the Indians are bored, they will go and watch a play where black people are acting. When the Afrikaans people need to buy something, they'll go to the Indians. When the black people are looking for food, they will go to the Afrikaners. Do we, how do we allocate our resources and our time and our energy and our skills? Do we zone in on what we are traditionally good at and have been exposed to and outsource everything else? Or do we say, look, we're going to leave people exposed. If Afrikaans people leave tomorrow, we're fucked. If Indians leave tomorrow, we're fucked. So we need to aggressively upskill black people in these spaces. And the Afro Afrikaans people as well, they're like, look, this is what we're good at. But we're not good at retail, bro. We're not good at running businesses like, like the Jewish people. So we have to unfortunately learn some of these things. This is now at a generic level. Obviously at an individual level. If a boy, black boy or a black girl wants to farm, they should farm. If the little Afrikaans boy wants to be a ballerina or he wants to learn how to cook curry, he should do it. I'm speaking on a more generic term. Because similarly, I spoke about kids. Do I generally raise my kids to say, you will do this because you are a girl? Obviously, my girl might love rugby. My girl loved, might love shooting guns. That's her as an individual. But what is my parenting model as a general? Do I want my girls to have old school? Or do I want them to have current modern? Or are we working towards an idealistic future? I'd like to hear some of your thoughts, especially to the parents. What is your plan? Is your plan to go old school, traditional? Because you think that's what's best and that's where the world should be moving? Do you, are you currently happy with the modern way of saying, look, equip the girls, empower them. But at the same time, don't leave the boy children beho uh, behind. Let them also learn how to cook clean, but let them also learn some of the more masculine stuff. And what is your view of an idealistic future? Is it taking from the modern where the boy and the girl both learn skills, the same skills? Or do we go to a more old school approach where boys are boys and men are men and girls are girls and women are women? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Pen you all the black pen. Cheers.